What is going on people? This is Medicosis Perfectionatus where medicine makes perfect sense. Today we'll continue our playlist called Ever Wonder Why? Now the question of the day is why is Hagma normochloremic? In the previous video we have talked about why is Nagma hyperchloremic? But today why is Hagma normochloremic? The name of the playlist is inspired by this book. First of all, what the flip is Hagma? Hagma is a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. It's a metabolic acidosis with high anion gap. No kidding. What does normal chloremic mean? Normal level of chloride in your blood. When it comes to acid-base imbalances, we have four main conditions. Respiratory acidosis, respiratory alkalosis, metabolic acidosis, and metabolic alkalosis. Hagma and Nagma are both subtypes of metabolic acidosis. So the metabolic acidosis has two types based on what based on the serum anion gap if the serum anion gap is high we call it high anion gap metabolic acidosis if the serum anion gap is normal we call it normal anion gap metabolic acidosis normal anion gap as you remember was hyperchloremic you lost the bicarbonate and you gained chloride a negative for a negative to maintain electroneutrality hagma on the other hand is normochloremic when the pH is low, we call it acidosis. pH is low and bicarbonate is low, that's a metabolic acidosis. Then you look at the anion gap. If it's normal, it's nagma. If it's high, it's hagma. Hagma's here, nagma's here. Based on the anion gap, hagma has a high anion gap, usually greater than 12. Nagma has a normal anion gap, usually less than 12. Some people say like 2 to 12, 3 to 10, 5 to 10, no one cares. If it's 12 or less, it's normal. How about the serum chloride in Hagma? It's normal, which is about 104 milli equivalents per liter. But in Nagma, it's high. So Hagma has a high anion gap, but a normal chloride. Nagma has a normal anion gap, but a high chloride. To understand why, let's talk about the serum anion gap. Some stuff is just in the nature of things. This is how it works. Example, the law of electroneutrality is in the nature of things. It's natural to have the number of cations in your body equal the number of anions in your body. Whether you're healthy or sick, we don't care. It's a law of nature. Hey, medicosis, but I feel like... Shut up. This has nothing to do with your feelings. It's in the nature of things. The anion gap actually does not exist. Really? Yeah, really. It's a gap in our knowledge, a gap in our measurement, a gap in the lab. This gap represents the anions that we should have measured, but we did not because it's so time consuming and expensive. To figure out the gap, let's start at square one. As you know, the number of cations in your body has to equal the number of anions in your body. These cations are measured and unmeasured. The anions include the ones that we measured and the ones that we did not measure. Play with some algebra and then you have the unmeasured minus the unmeasured equals the measured minus the measured. What's the anion gap? Oh, it's the gap in our knowledge. It's the gap in our measurement. Oh, so it's the unmeasured minus the unmeasured. Yeah, unmeasured anions minus unmeasured cations, which happens to equal the measured cations minus the measured anions. What are these measured cations? Sodium. What are the measured anions? Chloride plus bicarbonate. And that's your anion gap. Look at this example. Serum anion gap equals this one or this one. So let's do it the hard way and then the easy way. The hard way is the unmeasured anions minus the unmeasured cations. What are your unmeasured anions? All of these. What are your unmeasured cations? All of these. Okay, do the math and the result will be uh, about 12 or some. 11 or 12 doesn't matter. Or you can do it the easy way. Measured cations minus measured anions. So sodium, that's the positive minus the negatives. And the result is the same. So the anion gap is a gap in what? In our measurement. It represents the unmeasured anions. In other words, it represents the anions other than these two. Because chloride and bicarbonate are measured, any other anion is not measured. Organic acids are not measured, phosphate is not measured, etc. Please don't forget the organic acids. The math doesn't change. The math will give you the exact same answer. Here are your cations and your anions in your body. Of course, they are equal. All right. The cations are made of what? Measured, which is the sodium, and unmeasured, which is anything else. How about the anions? Measured, which include bicarbonate and chloride, plus the unmeasured, which is everything else. Where is the gap? The gap is the space between here and here. You see the square? Yep, it's the gap between this line and this line. That's the anion gap. We talked about Nagma in the last video. What happened? What happened in Nagma 
is that my bicarbonate dropped. Oh, so you lost a negative. That's true. In order to maintain electron neutrality, what should I do? I should gain a negative. So I gained chloride. I lost bicarbonate. I gained chloride. They balance each other out. Anion for anion. Negative for negative. What happened to the anion gap? No change. The anion gap here, which is from this line to this line, is the same as from this line to this line. The anion gap did not really change. But in Hagma, something else was going on. A certain disease or intoxication is adding unmeasured anions into my body. So the unmeasured anions are increasing. These anions are negative. What should I do? As you gain negatives, you should lose negatives. You will lose bicarbonate. Let's say I have lactic acidosis, for example. So lactic acid is an unmeasured anion. Keep adding lactic acid, lactic acid, lactic acid. That's a negative. In response, you should get rid of negatives. And that's Mr. Bicarbonate. So what happened to the anion gap here? Oh, it increased. That's why we call it a HAGMA, high anion gap metabolic acidosis. What happened to chloride? No change. It didn't have to change. That's why we call Hagma a normochloremic metabolic acidosis. You added a negative, you removed a negative, and chloride did not have to move. What causes Hagma? Basically a toxin. Could be exogenous like alcohol, and it has many forms like methanol, ethanol, ethylene glycol, etc. Or endogenous, something from within like diabetic ketoacidosis, my pancreas is screwed and I have an infection or a stressful situation or whatever, lactic acidosis, uremic alkalosis due to kidney failure, etc. Acute or chronic renal failure will cause HAGMA. However, renal tubular acidosis causes NAGMA. What happened in alcoholic ketoacidosis? Let's say I listened to Joe Rogan too much and I became intoxicated with methanol. All right, what is the metabolite of methanol? Formic acid. Say it one more time because it was so beautiful. Formic acid. Acid. Yeah, it's an acid. That's why it's an acidosis, metabolic acidosis. Formic acid is also known as formate. Oh, formate is an unmeasured anion. It's like phosphate, lactate, sulfate, etc. When you gain an anion, what should you do? You should lose an anion to preserve electron neutrality, to solve the cation anion dichotomy. As you gain a negative, you should lose a negative. When you gain a negative, you lose a negative or gain a positive. Hashtag electron neutrality. Moreover, formic acid is an acid. It increases protons in my body. And when the acid goes up, what will happen? Bicarbonate will start to buffer this acid. Now you have consumed all of your bicarbonate. Serum bicarbonate will go down. You have sacrificed a base for an acid to solve the acid-base dichotomy. So there are two dichotomies going on. Acid-base dichotomy and cation anion dichotomy. Acid-base, right? As I keep adding acids to my body, formic acid, what's gonna happen? The base is gonna go away. And since these unmeasured anions are negative, what can happen when you add negatives? You will lose a negative. And that's why in Hagma, protons are high, pH is low, bicarbonate is low, anion gap is high, serum chloride is normal. See, medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. How about lactic acidosis? Same exact thing, but instead of formate, you have lactate this time. Lactate is an unmeasured anion. You gained an anion, you will lose an anion. That's why bicarbonate dropped. Moreover, lactic acid is an acid. When you gain an acid, you lose a base. I have lactic acidosis. Unmeasured anions will increase. Bicarbonate will decrease. Anion gap will go up. Chloride will stay the same. Causes of Hagma are here, and the mnemonic is mud piles. M is methanol. U, uremia. D, diabetic ketoacidosis. P, propylene glycol. I, iron tablets. L, lactic acidosis. E, ethylene glycol. And S is salicylate, especially later. If you notice, in all of these, or most of them, you have added an unmeasured anion. You have added an acid to your body. In methanol, you've added formic acid or formate. How about uremia? You've added azotic materials, that's why we call it azotemia, to your body. And these are unmeasured anions. These are organic acids. In diabetic ketoacidosis, you've added ketones, such as acetone, acetoacetic acid, beta-hydroxybutyric acids. And these are acids and 
unmeasured anions. In lactic acidosis, you have added lactate. In ethanol and glycol, you have added oxalic acid. All of these are acids. They are also unmeasured anions. In salicylate, it, it, here's the name, salicylate. It's an unmeasured anion. It's also an acid. That's why we call it acetyl salicylic acid. So the moral of the story is HAGMA is normochloremic, but NAGMA is hyperchloremic. I am a metabolic acidosis, my anion gap is high, but my serum chloride is normal. I'm another metabolic acidosis where my anion gap is normal, but chloride is high. It's all about electroneutrality, baby. It's in the nature of things. Have you woke Professor Red Adam Smith? I bet he haven't. That's why he can't explain the acid base. If you like this video, you will adore my acid base imbalance course. It has 30 videos plus cases plus notes plus a mind map. Go to metacosisperfectsnatus.com where we discuss metabolic alkalosis, respiratory alkalosis, respiratory acidosis, base excess, base deficit, water deficit, henderson hasselbalch equation, kaiser blake equation, Serum anion gap, urine anion gap, serum a smaller gap, stool a smaller gap, and others. And right now we have a 40% discount towards anything on my website. Just use promo code histamine. It's available for the next 37 students only. What other videos would you like to see in this playlist? Ever wonder why? Let me know in the comments. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my metacosisperfectsnetics.com website to get my acid base course and other courses. Go to Picmonic for some doozy animated medical mnemonics.